Uh, hey me, uh, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be doing a video on Dirt 5. Wait, this this isn't Dirt 5? What are you talking about? You can't tell the difference? Not really, they're both pretty and finished to me. Sup guys, Alex from Nothing Box TV here, and I have a question for you. What was your guys' favorite Codemasters game? Was it Dirt 2? Maybe the first grid? Or do you guys think things went downhill after the 1986 Super Robin Hood? All those games are great, but today I'm going to be covering Dirt 5, and I'm going to be giving you the goods, the bads, and the whys. When Dirt 5 was announced, its aesthetic and gameplay seemed like a no-brainer. The separation of the plain old Dirt games and Dirt Rally made it clear to fans which games would pay respect to hardcore rally fans and which would stick to the more arcadey style. While the differences are more than obvious now, Dirt 4's release in 2017 created some confusion by being a more forgiving version of Dirt Rally. It wasn't a bad game by any means but it felt more like Dirt Rally Light, which indirectly caused aesthetic and gameplay redundancies for the franchise. The MotorStorm developers, formerly formerly Evolution Studios, and formerly Codemasters Evo, and now Codemasters Cheshire, stated that this was more of a direct sequel to Dirt 2 and 3 and not 4, and personally I think that's for the best. I believe this is a really solid sequel to Dirt 2 and 3, however there's a lot of things holding it back from being one of the greats. But for now, let's start with the good. For anyone just wondering if the game is fun to play, the answer is a semi-confident yes? The handling model feels really responsive and feels even better with all the assists off. And while the vehicles don't feel very different from each other in the same category, almost all of them are enjoyable to drive. Uh yeah, we'll talk about the not so fun ones later. Dirt 5's handling actually feels more reminiscent of PS2 and original Xbox era racing games, and I actually mean that as a compliment in most areas. With all assists off, the vehicles drift around every corner without needing the use of the brakes or handbrake. This seems to be an intentional case of form over function, and in most cases I found that it made the game more entertaining for sure. However, the AI certainly doesn't feel the same way. Track design and environments are also top notch and some of the best in the series. The game takes you across the world just like in past entries, but each location has multiple shifts in lighting and weather effects within each race. So just about every race begins with one weather setting and looks completely different by the end of the race. This level of variety absolutely helps reduce the repetitive fatigue that some other racing games career modes run into. And in fact, this game fooled me a few times when playing a reverse course with a completely different weather effect, where sometimes it didn't click until the second or third lap, or even until I ran into that course a third time with an even different weather style. So props to Cheshire for that. Alright guys, science time, I've made a discovery. The shadows move when you do. This is a super hot spinoff. Not only that, but the environments are gorgeous. Perhaps not the greatest of all time, but certainly one of the prettier off-road racing games. Environments look great no matter the weather, and it looks like Dirt 5 stole Spider-Man's PS4 puddles and went to town on them. Cheshire really loves puddles, and they hope you do too, because I don't think there's a single race that doesn't have at least one outside of Gymkhana or custom maps. And speaking of custom maps, there's a Playgrounds mode. It's your typical create your own map tool, but I think that it's one of the best features in the game. Once you're done or just need a break from the career, you'll have plenty of new courses to keep things fresh. And there's even split screen multiplayer on PC. I mean, good luck finding someone to play Dirt 5 with you, but... Some other noteworthy bits are Sam Drake, Nathan Drake, and Donut Media are in the game. And their performances are good, albeit very short. So those are all the good things I have to say about Dirt 5. However, you may have noticed some asterisks during the good parts. Those asterisks bring us to the bad. Quick editor's note, so my opinions of the game's difficulty has changed a little bit. I do find the game to be a bit easier upon recording gameplay for the video, but I decided to leave it in because these are the exact feelings I had when going through my playthrough of the career mode and everything before starting the video. Maybe they fixed the game or patched it up a little bit. These are my experiences now. You're going to hear my experiences from then. While the handling model may feel great in most cases, the AI doesn't follow the same rules as you. Not only that, the AI can be flat out cheaters on harder difficulties with your assists off. I started the game on the very hard difficulty and dropped it down to hard because of this. I would even argue that the game is next to impossible on very hard with no assists in the icebreaker or sprint challenges. But not only do the AI drivers cheat, you also don't have much of a choice for vehicles on harder difficulties. Do you prefer one car more than the others? Sure, you can use that car if you want to lose. This turns the game being about expression and player choice into a pick the highest ranking vehicle or be miserable for the entire race. But not only that, I noticed that in some instances, slower ranked AI cars will still be faster than you in the straights thanks to the rubber banding. So I thought, hey, I'll try that truck instead because I lost to it. But no, it's just slow like the stats said from the very beginning. 
I just want to win, okay? But usually when you don't win, you crash, right? Well, in Dirt 5, you can enjoy a really lackluster damage model and really bizarre crash physics. Just take a look at Dirt Rally 2.0 compared to Dirt 5. Not only that, the custom livery mechanic is a joke. Only three or so designs per vehicle class. So basically the game was almost better off without custom liveries. So Codemasters, you win the mechanic that wasn't broken, but I fixed it anyways award. Congratulations. But at least you can show off your sick livery online. So how is the online mode you may be asking? Completely barren and tacked on. The most I managed to race with was against two other racers one time, and every other time it was only against one other opponent. But I'm proud to say that I've won almost every online race I've managed to get into. But that doesn't necessarily mean I enjoyed it. Also, the sprint cars suck and I want them deleted. And that, my friends, brings us to the why. Like, why is there no replay editor? Were there not enough teraflops to include it? While the weather system is really well done, why does the weather always change right after each lap almost every single time? It's also pretty humorous seeing the shadows suddenly begin to move like the stairs in Hogwarts and then stop all of a sudden until the next lap. It was stuck in time. Another issue that I have with the weather is that it's almost entirely cosmetic. Why incorporate a massive dust storm that doesn't increase the difficulty for steering at all? Codemasters bragged about how the weather was going to be the best in the series, but it turns out they only meant visually. What's even more of a confusing move visually is the decision to make TAA impossible to turn off. So you're stuck with the blurriest anti-aliasing imaginable and have fun sharpening it with the NVIDIA control panel because it still looks terrible. Side note, the game now crashes on startup if I use the sharpening, so guess I'll die then. And another head scratcher is performance. Why does Dirt Rally 2.0 look better and perform better? Sure, it runs well for the most part, but I guess it must be Denuvo making it more sluggish. Make note to add Denuvo to the bad list. The issues don't just stop at the visuals either. To give Dirt 5 some star power, they hired Troy Baker, Nolan North, and Donut Media to do voice work. And don't get me wrong, they're all excellent, but my gripes are not with them, it's with how much they were used. I distinctly remember Troy, Nolan, and the Donut crew being heavily promoted as an integral aspect of the career mode, but in reality, it seemed like they were probably only in the studio for a day or two given the amount of dialogue they even have. And spoilers to those who care. You really, you really shouldn't care, by the way. This is how you're rewarded for beating Troy and Nolan at the end of the career. Uh, surprisingly okay. Surprisingly okay. Not what I expected to hear. <laughs> uh, given your previous, um, attitude on our show, can uh, I just say? Yeah, well, you know, it's, um... Just part of the show. Well, we got to give respect where respect is due. Is a hard-fought loss. Uh, I don't think you could win That's well any put. better than I that. I like that, a hard-fought <laughs> loss. Uh, Thank you, Troy and Nolan. I feel very accomplished that I had beaten you two as very dynamic three-dimensional characters and not lifeless shells of cars that I've already been racing against for 15 hours. The same goes for Donut Media, which to the game's credit, I started following their channel after hearing about them through Dirt 5. But why not make the guys from Donut be fictional characters instead of themselves? This game is full of Donut Media references that not many will understand right off the bat. And it would be extremely confusing hearing about hearse purrs and buff horses if you weren't already a fan to begin with. HDR OLED horses. Also, the game defaults to borderless window, which I actually prefer, but the thing is, is that they don't hide the mouse. Are you guys psychopaths? And that's why this game is one big why. There truly is a decent racing game hidden under this mess, but sadly I don't think Cody's is going to dig very much to find it. They state that 2021 will transform this game, but I'm just already so done with it that it's probably getting uninstalled after this video is done. Because of this game's half-baked nature, it seems like the game was practically dead on arrival. And I really want to be wrong, but it doesn't look like this game will be another No Man's Sky or Master Chief Collection redemption story. But hey, at least on the bright side, I didn't have to mention EA in this video even once. Wait, wasn't there something about EA buying Codemasters? So what did you guys end up thinking about Dirt 5? Did you guys like it more than I did? I certainly hope you did, jeez. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys stick around. Follow me on Twitch, I'm gonna start streaming there. So like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed. Mm -hmm.